green abundance here in Framingham, Massachusetts at an edible forest garden that we're installing and I just wanted to uh, showcase a water harvesting project that we're working on. So right here was the former site of a Norway maple that we've since cut down and uh, stumped out and we've since installed a drain pipe system connected to the downspouts on the front of the house so that we divert water away from the house and into this basin. So we're going to be backfilling this with crushed stone and water will be flowing from the roof and down into here to passively irrigate and harvest rainwater for the plantings that will happen in this area. Now, so as to not make sure that water backfills and goes back to the house, the front edge of this basin is just a bit lower than the junction point over there so water will further make its way slowly down into the landscape and hit a garden bed that we're placing along the front edge here. So water will come from that basin, move its way down, and then spread across the uphill side of the garden bed that we install here with a bunch of wildflowers and native grasses. So we've been running our water here, so everything is working as expected. So right now we're having water overflow at our low point here. It's traveling down this path, and it's coming to this intersectional point. So right here, the water is being split and diverted to two different levels of contour. So this is the first one here. It's the shorter one, but these blue flags here towards the rocks represent one level of elevation of contour. The second point is being diverted to those set of white flags, that contour line. So right now, from this point down there, there's about a six inch elevation drop that's transitioning, so the water is moving down to that point. Now, so the water is going down here, and you can see it moving pretty quickly. So that's why I've added since rocks to help stabilize it a little bit. But you can see once it gets to here, the water just slows down and you can barely, barely see it move here. And so this water has moved all along this edge, along here, and has started to overflow right here, and is making its way along the property line. It hasn't quite gotten enough water yet, but you can see right here is the storm drain. So any water that would have normally gone right off the property to the street and to the storm drain is now being collected along this back edge of this garden bed. So you can see it right here. And so just to uh, reiterate the flow of water through the property. Our highest point of infiltration starts with the gutters here on the roof. Those feed into the downspouts here, which feed into solid pipe to this point. And then there is a perforated drain pipe that goes all the way along the front edge of what will be a blueberry bed. Meeting at a T point here, connecting with the solid pipe that's on this drain pipe. And then both moving together through this area, through solid pipe, into this water catchment basin. And that water catchment basin slows the water down, soaks it as much as it can, and in the event, such as we're uh, emulating here, of a very heavy rain event where the flow of water is too quick for this basin to percolate it, it overflows at this point, further moving downhill and hitting this series of beds, or I should say one long bed, where it then is distributed along the back edge to this point. Once it gets to a certain point here, where it, the elevation change prevents it from going any higher, it overflows and moves down here and all along this line here before leaving the property there and making its way back down to the street. 
we have one, two, three points of water infiltration before it is lost to the storm drain. So yeah, that's uh, that's what we're working on here at this edible forest garden, uh, using nature's resources as best we can. So, as you can see, we planted our blueberries along the perimeter of our water catchment basin. And I've just been running a simulated rain event by running our hose down to the downspout, which connects with our solid tube and exits into this water basin. This is where the spillway is, so water has come over this part and made its way down to this point. Water has made its way over to here. Still going a little bit. Yeah, roughly it'll be about right here. So this whole edge is getting irrigated. And then this is our transition from this elevation here down to this elevation. And as you can see, maybe a little clearer, there's quite a bit of water being stored along this contoured edge of the front garden, or of the uh, back edge of this garden bed. So we're making our way all the way along here, and we can see that water daylighted here and is now making its way along the property line down to the street in which it will eventually go to that storm drain. So, appears to be a uh, successful water harvesting feature here in this garden. Uh, it's kind of a way, instead of having to set up rain barrels around your house, to uh, put rainwater passively in the landscape without having to worry about um, emptying a barrel or even just having the aesthetics of a barrel in front of your house. So yeah, here it is, completed and uh, functioning as planned. Green Abundance, out.